right, well, welcome to another episode of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie Prolongo, and of course, joining me is the absolutely wonderful Nora Eisner. Hey, Nora. Hi, Cassie. Hello. Okay, so we have been really happy to see questions and comments and some activity going on on our social media channels. Of course, you can always email us too if you want us to take a look at anything. But for today's episode, we are going to delve into one of the questions that was submitted on Twitter, um, which basically says, I'm going to read it really quickly. I would like to hear in future episodes some education part about the astronomy parameters in Simbad. And I had to look up, I didn't know what Simbad was. Of course, Nora knew what it is because she's an astronomer. Uh, Simbad is a database, an astronomical database. Um, and it's something that citizen scientists can use if they would like to use, astronomers use, and everybody, I guess, uses this. Um, but we want to talk a little bit about why you would want to use it, what kind of parameters there are. Um, so we won't delve into it in a lot of depth, but I think for the purposes of today, we just want to answer the question. Since we're already talking about resources, let's delve into it a little bit more. So I think Nora is going to uh, share her screen so we can take a look. <laughs> I will. Yeah, the timing of this question was perfect. Um, yeah. Just talking about resources. Um, great. Okay, well, hopefully you can see my screen here and we're on the front page of Simbad. We'll post the URL to this uh, underneath the video. Um, and yeah, as you said, Cassie, it's just a database of, of lots of different information. Um, it's used, I should say, not just by the exoplanet community, but also used by people who study, for example, galaxies. Um, just because any astronomical object where we have any information about it is, is probably listed in here. Um, yeah. But we will stick to our exoplanets and our stars. Yeah. So I've, I've picked one already. I've picked a tick ID. So we want to search for a specific target. So we'll just go to search by identifier, which is, which is there where I just clicked on. Now, previously, we were able to search for things by entering the tick ID into just a, a search box. Um, but unfortunately, Simbad doesn't know tick IDs. So we have to instead go to ExoFOP first. Um, hopefully, this is looking familiar. We can mm -hmm. type the tick ID into there. And then at the top here, as we previously mentioned, we have lots of different other names for this target. And we can just choose one of these. Not all of them work with Simbad, so you might have to play around a little bit. Um, but you can choose one of those. I know that the the Tycho one works, TYC stands for Tycho. So I will copy and paste that one and put that into here and press enter and it worked. Boom, and there we go. And we've got a very familiar layout like we did in, uh, in other things. We've got the left-hand side, we've got uh, bits in the middle, and then we have that viewfinder like what you uh, mentioned before with mass. So this, this looks, there's a lot more data, it seems like in the middle, but the layout looks very familiar to um, other resources. That we've been using yeah definitely yeah it's nice to, to see some of the information and kind of tools that we've previously seen like you said the viewfinder over here it's always nice to see what we're looking at um yes then on the left we again have some other names so this is also wasp 48 um and then in that middle column we have again some familiar information that we already saw so for example all of these um magnitudes here so all fluxes these are different brightnesses in different color bands so we also saw this on exofop um, and it's always nice to know how bright it is in, in a particular color band um, that helps you observe, it helps you know what kind of telescope you need to observe it, for example. Um, but what's really cool about Simbad is that you can scroll down here and you can find out who has talked about this target, who's written an article about it and where it's been published. Uh, mm. So that's under this reference section that we can see here. And we can go back really far and we can see who has published anything on this target since 1850. So this is kind wow. of the standard range that we have here, 1850 to the current year, so until now. Um, so when we press display here, it's already being displayed actually, um, we find every article that has ever mentioned this, this particular candidate. So it doesn't mean that that article is specifically about that candidate, but they might have mentioned it in some, some capacity. So this is really useful to see what is known about something. And you can see this is just an, an endless list. Um, oh my God. So this is very much like a researcher's capacity. I mean, of course, as a citizen scientist, if you want to delve into it, you certainly can. But this is this is like a researcher's platform. It's a database of databases. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of information coming at you here, but maybe just looking at some of the things and not feeling overwhelmed um, unless you really want to do a deep dive into certain targets and of course you can the information's there <laughs> um and another thing i want to point out on here is 
this is actually something I discovered quite recently. I'm sure I should have known about it already, but I did discover it quite recently. And that's <laughs> under this hierarchy section where it shows you what, um, whether there is something smaller around this star. Um, so the star in this case is the parent and there are children around it, which in this case are the, pe are the planets. And I just think it's so cute that they're called children. Um, but if you click on that, then you get shown that there is in fact, uh, an exoplanet, an extrasolar confirmed planet around this star, that's WASP48b. Uh, and then again, you just have it separate page for that candidate. But it's nice that they're linked and you can just easily get from one page to the other. Um, and that one is the parent and one is the child. That's so cute. And also, I know, we find that adorable and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? <laughs> we need to find enjoyment where we can. Um, that's awesome. That's really cool. So that that's a good example. And I think just for the purposes of today, it's good to have just kind of a nice overview. Of course, there's lots more information in here. Have fun playing around with it. Is there anything else, Nora, that you want to mention maybe just as a quick snippet um, before we, I don't know, say that this is probably enough for this particular one? Um, yes, actually, let's very briefly also mention that if you can also easily get to Sinbad from Exofop itself. So if yes. we go back to Exofop, let's um, let's take a different target because we can. Uh, we'll go back to here. We'll do 4707, 0327. We'll enter that. Um, that and down here. Memorized? Can, sorry. Did you have that memorized? <laughs> I have a very limited number of tick IDs memorized, <laughs> and that was one of them. <laughs> We'll talk about That's why. Amazing. Yeah, um, you're going to have to. I need to know this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, once once you are on any any tick ID or sorry, Exofop page for any tick ID, whether you've memorized it or not, you can go down to external links here and just click on Simbad, and you can click on there, and it will again take you to one of those Simbad pages. And you just have to. It takes you to kind of this more general one. It shows you the one that is at a distance of zero from your own target is the target. Um, there's another target slightly further away and, and, and even further away. So we'll click on that top one. That's the one that we care about. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I picked this one in particular is because this one is listed as an eclipsing binary. So if, if the object that we're looking at is, you might remember the last one was just listed as a star, but if this, the object that you're looking at is listed as um, a different object, if, for example, an eclipsing binary or an R. Lyrae star or um, any other variable star, then it, that would be listed in here. So that's another very good reason as to why we would use Simbad. Very cool. And in future episodes, we will go more in depth about maybe what these other stars are and everything. But for the purposes of today, we're just kind of showing you this different information and where to link to and where it links from, rather. Um, really just so that we can conclude this whole resources aspect. Of course, there's some great content out there. Go have a play with it. Um, just have fun and take a look. And it, it's really cool. I don't know about you, Nora, because I know you are an astronomer and you see a lot of this stuff all, all the time. But for me as a citizen scientist or just going through, I mean, it's amazing how much great information is out there quite literally at your fingertips. So go have a play with it. Um, let us know what you think. And of course, as always, send in your questions and comments. We really enjoy, we are reading them and we enjoy uh, your feedback. It's It's been wonderful and you can always email us as well. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much, Nora, for taking us on that whirlwind adventure. <laughs> I really appreciated it. And uh, until next time, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.